Bruce Edlin. Plafa must die so that Ipo self-determination can live. This was said by Ndidi Uwechu. Details below. The key to grasping the danger that Piafra promises represent is in their desire for unmerited power. The signs are already there that the word Piafra is likely to take Igbo nation to a desolate place, if not set aside. As revealed in the part one and part two of the series, the word Piafra does not meet international law and United Nations UNDRIP criteria for getting self-determination. Therefore, those who call themselves Biafra agitators, whether they are sadly the victims of deception or are themselves the deceivers, really ought to be referred to as fake activists. Still more, it is one thing for little children to believe in Father Christmas and to expect him to come on 24th December night. But it is quite alarming for adults to believe Biafra will go when they have seen no evidence of any work done for it. Plus, can read for themselves that the word Biafra fails when it comes to satisfying self-determination criteria. What is quite certain is that those claiming to bring self-determination for Hebrews by using the word Biafra have only one thing in mind. They want power over others and the money that comes with it so they can gather up a following by manipulating the very strong emotions that some people have for that world. They are ruthless and without conscience over the damage they cause the people who accept their lies as truth and put their hopes of freedom on them. It is all quite a pitiful situation. Moreover, it signals danger ahead for Igbo nation, which will be very briefly explained. The key to grasping the danger that Biafra promises represent is in their desire for unmerited power, having to employ lies, frauds, and even deadly violence does not in any way discourage them. The prison daily promoting the word Biafra. Using South Africa as an illustration, black people had wanted freedom from the evil system of apartheid. Job Jacob Zuma was one of the ANC leaders who fought for the the commissioning of the apartheid constitution and for self-determination for black people. When South Africa started a new dispensation, those who led the anti-apartheid fight were rewarded by being president turn by turn. There were several misgivings when it now came the turn for Zuma to become president because there had been allegations of corruption, plus his womanizing revealed indiscipline. Signs that he lacked the character needed to take South Africa to a great future. Sure enough, South Africa began to diminish under President Zuma. It became known for corruption and violence, including xenophobic violence against other Africans. Zuma was criticized for, if not supporting it, at least not doing enough to stop those killings. More recently, when Zuma was convicted for corruption, it was his supporters in his own province who carried out the violent riots and disgraceful looting. Many had always thought that Zuma should never have been allowed to lead South Africa. He wanted power and he schemed to get it 
and was able to manipulate his followers who can see are quick to use deadly violence against their own people. Now, looking at South Sudan, once they got freedom from Arab Sudan, problems started from Reg Macha, who wanted power. He had been a leader in the fight for freedom and self-determination, so that so and so had Salva Kiir. Kiir became president, but Macha's craving for power made him a rival, who would not rest until he was recognized with high enough power, even if it meant war in the new country of South Sudan. To get power, hungry Macha to stop warring. President Kiir had to form an unsteady unity government and make Macha his voice. The brief outlines are both released to how Biafra promises power hungry individuals who use deceit have entered the Igbo clamor for self determination and power. They will be there under false pretense, acting as leaders of something appropriating to themselves what they have not done, copying the tone and format of the NIMAS movement, the authentic self-determination movement, and claiming fake victories. There will always be a price to pay for any community that accepts open lies. Example, that the word Biafra can never bring them self-determination and where adults accept fantasy and daydreaming as reality. Ibo Nation is already paying the price with the lynching by burning, full castrations, torture and deadly violence brought to them by the Biafra street gang called IPOB. They are also facing destruction of their shops and stores for refusing the IPOP command to sit at home in honor of their gang leader who is on remand. Thus, it is clearly power over Igbo nation that IPOP gang wants, not self-determination for Igbos. In lawless Nigeria, it would not be surprising if other Biafra groups also transfer, transform themselves into street gangs, each using violence to become warlord rulers of Igbo land. If Igbo nation can protect itself against the desolation that Biafra promises will bring upon it, it would take being sober and being willing to accept truth when it is revealed.